Thanks. So thanks for having me. This is also my first um, uh, spatial lightning talk. So thank you. And you can just go to the next slide. So moving from a grid system to California really gave me an appreciation for using my phone's GPS to get around. However, one concern researchers have is that the availability and ease of using GPS is actually creating a dependence on it, and we may see our own navigational abilities deteriorate. So to illustrate this, I have a bit of a thought problem. So when you rely on GPS to navigate in a brand new city, can you still recall the names of the streets you were on or the exit you took on the freeway? Could you find your way to an Airbnb without a GPS if you lost service at the end of the day? Now, if you answered yes to any of these, you might be a geographer, but most people, including myself, would have a hard time recalling these details. But that's only one side of the story. Next slide. GPS has numerous functionalities, which I'm going to broadly classify into groupings of reliance versus supplementary. By reliance, I'm specifically talking about how we typically think of GPS, where turn-by-turn -turn directions are provided every step of the way. Most research looks at this functionality, and there's compelling evidence to show that the more people rely on GPS for navigational purposes, the worse off they are when required to navigate without the device. To add to this, some of my lab's research indicates that younger generations may be particularly susceptible to reliance detriments as they had access to a GPS in their early driving years. Supplementary functionalities, on the other hand, contain information that would be mostly impossible to know prior to traveling. This can include time and traffic estimates, alternative routes, planning routes, and using the GPS similar to a paper map where there's easy access to information on all the surroundings. And this is really where my research question comes in, as we don't have much evidence on if this grouping actually has any effect on navigation. Next slide. Now, I ran a pilot study to gauge exactly how people reported using GPS in various navigational scenarios. The first two are distance scenarios, where participants were asked um, about questions that were more distant and they had low familiarity with their surroundings. So the first one was visiting a distant friend or family member, and the second was traveling to a hotel or Airbnb in a, new, uh, in a brand new city. And so as expected and indicated by the yellow bars, the majority of participants reported to relying on GPS, where they used it for full navigation. However, as indicated by the numerous other colored bars, there are other supplementary functions functionalities that are commonly used. Next slide. So the other two scenarios were in residential areas where they likely had high familiarity of their surroundings. So if the first scenario is about usage traveling from their residence to school or work, and the other was traveling to a restaurant or a store in their home city that was brand new. As expected from the home to work scenario, most participants responded that they don't use their GPS at all. But when we saw that traveling to a new place in their home city, participants were more likely to rely on GPS for turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and there were more variations for supplementary usages. So ultimately, this leads to the original question, how does GPS usage affect navigation? We're still running studies to give a more exact answer, but what we do see is that reliance functionalities may be the culprit for detriments. Those who need and often use GPS for turn-by-turn -turn navigation across even familiar scenarios may see more of a detriment than those who regularly use GPS for supplementary purposes. So in other words, I'm not advocating that we completely stop using GPS, but maybe we could benefit by paying attention to the street signs next time we're out. Thank you.